Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bharti, and we are here at Open Source Summit in Bilbao, Spain. And today we have with us Rod Burns, VP of Ecosystem at Codeplay. Rod, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I would like to just talk a bit about Codeplay, talk about the origin, and of course, your association with Intel and Linux Foundation. Our mission really is to build the largest open ecosystem. Um, and what we do is we work with uh, companies that are building um, processors and help them to enable open standards with them. Um, we also work very closely with the developer community um, to help them to understand um, how to use open standards. And we also work very closely with open standards organizations um, to help define open standards um, and contribute to open source projects. And if you look at Intel, Intel has been uh, not only the member of Linux Foundation for a long time, you folks also do a lot of open source. So I want to talk about also uh, the, the idea behind Codeplay and also the play on the word Codeplay. Codeplay originally was, uh, was very much focused on games. So the, the founder of Codeplay um, worked on games back in the late 80, 1980s and the 1990s. Um, and the reason that Codeplay was set up was that he had a recognition that the tools that developers um, were able to use to develop games, um, and particularly with graphics processors, um, needed something different. Um, so the code play really goes back to our gaming uh, kind of roots, um, and that's the yeah that's the origin. One of the reasons we are talking today is also the UXL Foundation that you folks announced today. Talk about uh, what is this foundation all about? Yeah, sure. So um, so I'm the the chair for the steering committee. Um, so we've just announced the Unified Acceleration Foundation. We call it UXL Foundation for short. Um, it's much easier to say. Um, and really, our mission is to build um, a multi-vendor, multi-architecture way for software developers to write their applications for all different accelerators. And we do this um, on the basis of open standards um, and also on the basis of open source projects as well. If you look at Linux Foundation, there are a lot of foundations, a lot of projects that are trying to solve this problem. Intel, you folks, you know, one API is already there. So when we look at some of these uh, foundations, sometimes you might see a lot of overlap is happening, and then you'll also see them crack some gaps. So can you talk about what gaps, what overlaps is a code play or your Excel foundation you know, filling there? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it might be worth me talking a bit about, you know, the context. So, you know, the, the landscape of computing at the moment is changing a lot. Um, and the use of accelerators, and by accelerators, I mean things like GPUs, but also FPGAs, and also, you know, more specialized AI um, types of processors. The, the use of them is growing rapidly. Um, and that's really, you know, driving a lot of developers towards that. And the, the AI kind of boom at the moment um, is creating a lot of headlines. You know, ChatGPT extensively uses GPs, GPUs for a lot of the data processing that it does. But actually, GPUs are be, have been increasingly being used within lots of different verticals in the last five years. Um, if you look at the top 10 supercomputers list, um, previously, you know, five or 10 years ago, they would all be CPU-based machines. They're now what we'd call heterogeneous architectures. So they have CPUs, but they also predominantly use GPUs for a lot of the um, heavy load processing. So, you know, in, that, in the context of that, um, it's really changing the way that developers are looking at, you know, the way that they develop their software. And one of the challenges that they have is that there is no unified way to develop software for accelerators such as GPUs. And this is you know, where the, the UXL Foundation is coming from. So we're bringing together um, different processor IP vendors, also the software development community. And our, our goal is to define standard interfaces that developers can use to target these accelerators, um, but also base them on open source implementations. And, and so the foundation um, goal is that how this relates to one API um, is kind of an interesting background as well. So the foundation announcement is not like we're starting from a clean slate. The foundation uh, contributions come from the One API initiative that previously has been, um, I suppose, led um, and driven by Intel. Um, so when in the next few months, we'll be migrating the specification from the One API initiative and uh, open source projects over to the governance of this, um, this UXL foundation. 
as you earlier, uh, when we were talking about code play origin, you started with games. But when we look at accelerators, uh, the usage, uh, and especially when we look at a lot of open source projects, you know, the usage goes beyond the origin in, original intent. So when we look at uh, UXL Foundation, can you talk about the industries, the use cases, which you can envision now, I'm pretty sure, two years from now when you and I will sit down and talk and you'll say, we did not even see that those will use it. So so let's talk about who are you looking at at this point? Yeah, I mean, interesting uh, question to ask actually, because you know, his historically, if you look at um, the One API projects, the One API spec, it's been very much focused on the HPC market, um, data centers, um, clusters, supercomputers, um, ultimately, you know, um, and you can see by the sorts of organizations that we have involved with this foundation, um, if you look at ARM or Imagination um, or Qualcomm, for example, their, you know, their kind of target markets go beyond that. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'd, I'd envisage us examining much more closely um, areas where AI is growing. I think automotive in particular is an area that's, that's very interesting. Um, some of my colleagues are working on safety critical versions of, of standards. Um, and I think that's, that's a very much a growth area um, driven, you know, again, by the kind of um, the, 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 the market leaders at the moment. Earlier, we were talking about one API and uh, how different, of course, is UXL Foundation from that project? Uh, why you felt that, of course, Intel, you folks invested a lot of resources in one API. So can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, as, as part of this process, and I suppose I'm talking uh, as the, the chair of the steering committee, you know, as part of this process, we got these organizations together and said, you know, how can we achieve this goal that we have, which is to build something that's multi-vendor, multi-architecture, and you can use it on, en on any like, accelerator. Um, we talked about um, accelerators being GPUs, but also, also beyond that. and. You know, one of the things that we, we came to, to agreement on is that, you know, open source and open standards generally win in the market. Um, historically, um, Linux, you know, it transformed the CPU software stack, you know, back in the day um, using open source and open standards. And now, you know, when you use Linux, you don't really need to think about how you compile your code for, for different CPUs. So basically, we want to achieve, you know, the same sort of thing but for like a different type of processor, the accelerator processor. So that's, you know, one of the reasons that we're motivated to do that is through the kind of open governance that the Linux Foundation um, enables us to have. Um, people talk a lot about democratization of software, democratization of standards. You know, there can't be many better places to to do that than within the Linux Foundation. And that's, you know, our motivation for joining this. I think the second main reason as well is that at the moment we have um, initial contributions that are being made um, with the open source projects, the specification, you know, we would envisage that it doesn't end there. You know, there, there are bound to be new components, new contributions that other organizations want to make. Um, and this um, governance model underneath the Joint Development Foundation, which is part of the Linux Foundation, you know, it allows us to, to go beyond what one API, one API was doing, and that is perfect segue to my next question. Of course, the foundation is announced today. I want to also understand what kind of community you want to build around this foundation, and if you can also talk about who are the members. Of course, you cannot share the other members that you are already working with, but let's just talk about the community. I guess because we have the benefit of the fact that these projects are um, becoming. Kind of mature the ones that are being contributed the specifications is becoming quite mature so we have quite a lot of participation and we have a lot of community engagement um contributions are being made to the open source projects for you know alternative processor targets um but equally developers um are adopting um the different projects for for use in their applications as well um one example that i use quite often is the gromax project um so gromax is a big science project um, that's developed in Europe. Um, I think it's you know one of the most popular software packages um, in the world. Um, and they've been using um, parts of projects from One API um, and the SQL standard 
um, to target you know multiple different vendors um, so that they can run their application on different supercomputers and clusters um, around Europe and around the world. The foundation was announced today. Can you also talk about who are the all members of this foundation? I'm really ex excited about the members that we've we've got joining. Um, I don't think these will be the last members. I just want to you know make that point. But this is a really really good uh, critical mass that we've got together. So to give you the full list, so we have ARM, who's obviously a processor IP um, company. We have Fujitsu, who's involved um, very heavily in you know supercomputers like the Fugaku uh, supercomputer in um, in Japan. Uh, we have Google Cloud who are involved. Um, they have, you know, a, a, a strong interest in, you know, AI, um, as a lot of companies do. And we have Imagination Technologies, who are a UK-based um, organisation that um, that has processor IP as well. Intel is is, is obviously a member um, with the um, the contributions that they're making as part of the the One API projects and the spec. We also have Qualcomm joining up, um, who uh, bring in again a. a we talked about you know different verticals. They bring a, a, a different vertical space to that. We also have Samsung, um, who specifically, you know, I think within the quote that you'll see in the press release, they talk about some of the technologies that they're trying to bring in to the industry, you know, to make uh, to solve some problems around memory management and things like that. So, so we have a really good, um, you know, broad spectrum of members. Um, and I suppose beyond that, we also have um, people who have been contributing to the project um, previously. Uh, Codeplay, the company that I work for, we've been contributing some, um, some new targets for the projects for um, for different uh, processors as well. Um, and, and other organizations have been doing the same. When I look at the list, and that's another beauty of open source or Linux Foundation projects is that competitors, they come together to collaborate on the code. Of course, their sales and marketing team fight in the market for the market share, but the, the, the tech teams, they collaborate. And I feel that open source is less about code. It's more about collaboration. It's more about working together to enable how to be able to work together. So it's a very good kind of foundation for that. Now, if we just look at UXL Foundation, you shared a great list there. What kind of organizations should you will think, hey, this is ideally they should join, where they will get value at the same time, the ecosystem will get value from them. We're really looking for, I suppose, two different types of, uh, of uh, organizations and, and even individuals to get involved. Um, we're really interested in the multi-vendor side of things. So we really want um, processor vendors to get involved and we want them to help us to add you know, different targets um, to the projects that exist so that developers can can reap the benefits of that a single api that can be used for um um for different vendors and, and and architectures the other side of things is the really really important thing that i want to highlight is the software developer side of things so it is one thing you know for us to be able to engage with uh, processor vendors to help them to bring their targets to the projects it's really, really important for us to get the software development community involved to ensure that we're moving things in the right direction, that we're collaborating in the right way. Um, the API definition is really, really important. I think it's important that the software developers tell us you know, what they're looking for from whether it's math APIs, whether it's AI APIs or, or otherwise. And I suppose the, the most important thing at the moment, um, particularly for AI, is that there are a lot of things that are very, very new and haven't actually been defined as industry standards yet. And that's really where I think the the, the most important feedback can come um, from developers at the moment. When we look at UXL Foundation, can you talk about you know, uh, what kind of projects we are looking at? The foundation is trying to cover you know, the fundamentals that a software developer would need to write you know, most applications um, that, that, that might be out there. So there's obviously different types of um, applications use different interfaces. Um, fundamentally, with the, the projects that we have, um, they have um, defined operations for things like um, math. So if your algorithm needs linear algebra um, operations, then you know the project provides those. Um, if you need random number generation, then the project provides um, those operations as well. And the idea being that if you use those libraries, then 
ideally you're getting the most optimized and performing um, versions of those specific operations. So these are kind of like, you know, building blocks, Lego blocks that your application might need in order to do, you know, implement the, 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 the algorithm and the, th and the things that you need. Um, if you think about it, I suppose, from an ISO C++ perspective, you know, you can, you can get C++ and you can say, sort something and it'll go away and do that. So in, I suppose in the, in the same sense, this will be, you know, you call the linear algebra routine on your data set and it'll go away and do it and it'll return it. So fundamentally, the, these are the both the APIs that are defined as to how you call uh, those operations, but the foundation will also govern like projects that implement those operations as well. And the idea is that if we can get all vendors together and they can work on these, then we can provide highly optimized versions of these um, across different vendor architectures. So we talked about foundation. Let's talk about the projects that this foundation will maintain and you know develop. Yeah, so um, I'll talk about a few a few of the projects that we have. Um, one of them is called One MKL. And um, this is a math library. Um, so what it does is that um, it allows you to call operations for things like linear algebra, like BLAS. Um, it allows you to call operations for things like random number generation. So. Um, the idea is that you can use this library and you can tell it which targets that you want to um, deploy to, whether that's you know an AMD GP or an NVIDIA GP or Intel GP or something else. Um, so that's one, one of the libraries that exists. Uh, there's another library called 1DNN. That's a neural network library. As you'd imagine, that's um, for AI applications and frameworks. Um, and that's you know very much focused on convolutions, um, which is the most commonly used um, operation in, in a lot of AI kind of frameworks and applications. Um, beyond that, there's also one called 1DPL. So this is a project that implements um, ISO C++ parallel routines. So I talked about, um, or I've talked about how you, in C++ you can call sort on a set data set and it will give you the sorted data set. The parallel routines will be, um, are, that, that are implemented are parallel versions of some of these um, C++ routines. So, you know, it might be a parallel sort or something like that. And it allows you to give it your data set and it'll go and process it on the GPU or other accelerator processor. Um, and it does it much faster than it would on a, a CPU, for example. So these are some of the projects that, that, that we have that have been implemented um, and we hope to extend, and we hope to get, you know, more contributions uh, to those. I also want to talk a bit about what are the things that are in your pipeline if you look at, you know, two, three, four, five months from now that these are the things you folks are working on? In terms of the foundation priorities, um, our primary priority at the moment is the smooth transfer, um, our migration of the open source project code um, and the specification over to the foundation um, under the Linux Foundation governance. Um, so that's something that needs to happen um, beyond that. You know, I think when we when we start talking within the steering committee, um, all the organisations will get an opportunity to give feedback on what what they think that we should be aiming at. We should certainly be setting a, you know goals that are that we're going to be trying to achieve. Um, certainly, one of the things that we've talked about is compat compatibility, and by compatibility, I mean if you're a software developer and you call the APIs that we've defined. Um, and implemented within the project, the behavior will be the same regardless of the vendor that you've chosen to target. So whether that's conformance or compatibility testing, whatever you want to call it, I think this is a really, really important uh, thing that, you know, that we need to do. And again, that's where developer, you know, involvement can really help us in terms of making sure that we're delivering uh, what developers need to, um, at the end of the day. Um, and I think beyond that, you know, the, the types of organizations we have as members and um, work in different verticals. Um, I think we'll be talking about, you know, what different areas that we should be focusing efforts on in terms of um, a lot of activity in one API has been in high performance computing. So in clusters and supercomputers. Um, but, you know, I think we'll be seeing a lot more um, activity from some of our members in um, a more embedded environment, if you'd, if you'd call it that. 
Rock, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about uh, not the, the, the origin, the history of the project, the foundation, and also the future of it as well. Thanks for all those insights. And uh, I would love to chat with you again. As you, you mentioned, there are so many things that you folks are working on. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. And of course, congratulations for this new foundation. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Yeah, no, it was great to speak to you. And hopefully, hopefully we can talk again.